Hello and welcome to this lecture on the structure of a Django application. It, it, it's a little early to be going through all the detail and there'll be some things that we're not really going to understand until a little bit later in the course. But I wanted to sort of show you the lay of the land so that as we add features you realize that there's sort of a method to the madness. Um, and so Django is a way of building web applications. Django has a pattern within itself that you know, it organizes folders in a certain way and puts files in certain places. And we're going to build these projects and applications. And you're like, why are these things organized the way they are? Well, it has to do with the fact that if you go from one Django project to another pro Django project, you can, you know, fit right in and understand how things are going to work. So the important terminology that's, I don't know, a bit frustrating is there is projects and applications. And from Django added this no has this notion of you have applications and you might have a project which is really basically a website and then you know some applications but if you had two projects you could share applications between them and so it's one or more one or more applications per project with the ability to potentially reuse a uh, application across multiple projects and so we're going to work with my DJ4E samples, which I hope you have downloaded somewhere, at least so that you can look at the files, look at the folders, look at the names of the files, and look at the contents of the files. This will all make more sense uh, when you get a little farther down the road. So here is uh, an LS statement, LS minus L, DJ4E samples, and hello. This is, this is within the folder DJ4E samples. There are two basic folders. Um, one is, in effect, the project-wide settings, which is the name, the same name as the folder that we're in. So it's DJ Free Samples slash DJ Free Samples, and then there's the first application, which is Hello. And there's a couple things here, like the uh, underscore underscore init.py. You'll notice it's an empty file. It's just some bookkeeping that helps uh, Python know that there are uh, files that contain classes and objects in here. Um, Settings.py and URLs.py and WGSI.py is kind of like the, the, the traffic cop for this entire application that, that routes things coming in to the right, uh, this entire project that routes things to the right application. And then within the application, we have some files. And you really are going to learn a lot about object-oriented programming because all these files contain objects. So Django is a large piece of software and you change its behavior by defining objects that accomplish things and then in effect registering those objects. So a common thing will be to take something like, you know, uh, admin.py or models.py, create a data model and then tell the admin user interface that you didn't write how to show the, your model and so you write stuff in admin.py to communicate into the admin user interface uh, how your data model that Django currently knows nothing about is supposed to be shown, et cetera, et cetera. And so there's a lot of files, and we will uh, talk through these files. Now, this is an example of a request response. It's a web application, and so the, what we'll talk about is once a request makes it into the server, it's going to do some work and then produce a response. But in that, we're going to look at all of the work that goes back and forth. And there's effectively like a routing step where it picks what part of your application to run this route this request to. There is a, a view part which is going to receive it and potentially store data. Some would call that the model. The storing of the data is certainly the model, but the receiving of the in, possibly new input data like you're going to create a new thing, that would be the model. And then the view, at, at some point you got to finish it and send something back out. And that's the purpose of the view. We call this pattern for building web applications, model view controller. And, and it's not like you can't build applications any other way. It's just by saying, it's a, a terminology that I can say going forward, that's the model, that's the view, and that's a controller function. And I, you don't have to know it right now, but these are words that are have loaded, they're loaded and have valuable meaning to us to be able to do. So at some point in this picture on the left side, we have a browser. DOM stands for the document object model. And at some point, the person clicks somewhere in the current web page they're looking at. And the web browser intercepts that and says, oh, OK, I've, I've got your click right here. The web browser intercepts it and then makes a socket connection across the internet, which we've seen before, and then does a GET request. And that is what then goes into the server. 
And so the three functions are the routing, the views, and the models. And there is an overall configuration file, the settings.py, which is sort of how you just say, oh, here's my view files, read these view files, read these model files. So the settings.py kind of controls everything. But when a request first comes in, it consults urls.py, and then for the project, and then it, it will include urls.py's from each of the applications. So once it's chosen what view to run, it looks at the URL, pulls out the pieces of the URL, and finds the views in views.py. That's a Python file that has the, uh, the destinations for these incoming URLs. Uh, there's a file called forms.py, which we'll see later, that is, uh, is used to make the, the forms aspect, the part that you fill in, uh, as pretty as possible. And then we take the resulting data that we're going to send back, and we merge that in through what's called a template. And then uh, if there's any data that we need stored, we, use, uh, we call the model, and we store that in a database. And there's this file called model.py, which informs how we store data in the database. And then when that's all done, we read potentially new data from the database, merge that into a template, and then send a response back to the browser. And then that response is all shown to the end user. And so that really is the uh, request into the server through a Django application, pulling data from various places, merging a template back in, and then uh, sending a response back to the, um, the, the application. So up next, we're gonna talk about virtual hosting. Now, in general, you're not gonna to have to worry about this. It just kind of explains how something like Python Anywhere is able to manage a whole lot of uh, domains on a single system. Hello, and welcome to another walkthrough for Django for Everybody. Today, I'm gonna to actually sort of fast forward a little bit into the future and show, talk a little bit about how the auto grader works. So I'm gonna go about to the middle of the course and show you an application that you're going to be working on called the Autos CRUD application. And Autos CRUD is kind of our destination. Uh, the idea is that it's got to create, update, and delete. Um, and it talks about login, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so I'll, I'll take a look at the assignment for this, and it, and it tells you how to log into this. You're going to have to make your own account. Um, and this is your assignment, and there's a lot to this assignment. I want to point out to you that one of the things that we always encourage you to do before you submit to the auto grader is to do your own testing. Okay? And so, so let's just do some testing here. Let's run this program, this implementation. I'm going to, it's going to log in, add a make, add an auto, view the makes. All right, so I'm going to log in. Um, DJ4E CRUD, and there's a password there. And so uh, we'll go to the autos one. Uh, let's add a make. So we're going to do a dodge. Let's add the make. So we're kind of running through this manual test. Then add an auto selecting the make. Add an auto on one. One, two, three, four. Some comments. Pick the make dodge. And, and this is code, it, it, it can break, right? You know, view the makes, update the make and press cancel, update the make and press cancel. It, it should go back to the list. So what I've given you on a lot of these more complex assignments is, a, is an outline of things that you should test, right? Um, and then if you, if you update this and you, uh, oh, I'm gonna update the makes, I gotta view the makes, I gotta update the make, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say dodge exclamation point, and submit it, and you'll notice that this changed automatically because of third normal form and all that stuff. And so all you, you know, you're supposed to write this code and then submit this to the auto grader. So the way the auto grader works is you're going to submit it. So you're going to get your homework all done and you're going to test it, and then you are going to submit it to the auto grader. And then and and you'll say evaluate. Now one thing you'll notice is this takes a little while, and that's because this is doing a whole bunch of request response cycles. So let me just show you. Well, I mean, and if it's good, it tells you, I like what you, I like this, I like this, I like this, I like that, I like that, and then, you know, it, it figures out your score. And you can see the pages that it's actually retrieving by looking at this show hide retrieve page. So let me just kind of show you a little picture of what's going on. 
So normally you're sitting here and you got your browser and you're using Python anywhere and you're writing code and you're testing code, right? You're testing the code in the browser just like I was doing here. That's I'm just me and my browser and I'm doing stuff and I'm working in Python anywhere, right? And so um, let's go ahead and make a console in Python anywhere and I'll say work on Django 3 because I always say that. Oops, work on Django 3. Uh, and I'm going to go into CD Django Projects, uh, CD CRUD. And so here's my code for CRUD, right? That's, that's the code that I've got for CRUD. You might be doing this with your, uh, you know, full screen editor, but I am basically at this point, I am working up here where I'm in my browser and I'm working on Python anywhere and I'm making changes and I'm testing those changes in another tab, right? So the code that I'm running, right, is running right here. So let me just make a little mistake here. And autos urls.py and um, let's just break both the update and the delete. I'm commenting these paths out and then I'm going to go to my web tab. Oops. Click web, open a new tab and I got to reload. So I'm going to reload crud. I'm going to reload crud. So I, may, I messed up my, just messed my code up, right? So you can see, so the code is mostly working, right? But when I click the up, update, like add a make is going to work, right? I can make a forward. That part's working. But as soon as I hit this update button, oh wait, what happened? Uh, no. Oh. Oh no, it's the makes that I broke. Sorry. I broke the makes. Now when I update this one, it's going to blow up. Okay, so <laughs> I almost didn't. I, I meant to break it. So what will happen here is I'm breaking it. I'm, I'm talking up here to the system. If I go and I run this in the auto grader now, this djfree.com is going to make requests to Python Anywhere and get answers back. And sometimes it likes the pages that it gets and sometimes it doesn't. The safest thing to do is test it by hand. But now if I go back to the auto grader, I mean, I, I, I saw this error and what I should do is fix the error. But now I'm going to go to the auto grader and I'm going to rerun the auto grader. And again, this takes a while and the longer these auto, the more steps the auto grader is taking, the longer it's going to take. Sometimes it'll take about 20 seconds. So I think it's done. So now we can see it's doing good. It, it logged in. It added a make. It's deleting makes. It's doing something. And oh, look, here we go. Page may have errors. HTTP status 404. Did not find a form with a submit button. Now you could just call your, your teaching assistant or me and say, what's wrong? Or you can click this button called Show and Hide Retrieve Page. And now it's saying, look, I, the auto grader is looking at this page. This is the exact URL that it's looking at. You can even click and you can open that URL. You'll see it's exactly this URL, right? And so what you need to do is then you need to fix your application, right? Fix your application, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to undo, let's come back undo, undo, save that, and then I'm going to reload my application because I'm not going to fix it. Takes a moment. So now that I put those routes back in, this update will work. Right? Now that code works. And if I run the auto grader, because I got this thing to rerun the same test, you can, you can uh, redo it. So then it's running the test, running the test, running the test. And now it's done. So now it made it past. It's all green, it's all green, it's all green. And we got, a, we got a good score. So the key thing is to get used to this idea that you should test your code, run through all the scenarios. When you run the auto grader, it will take some time because it's actually doing all of the things. It's pretending to be a browser djfree.com is pretending to be a browser in order to test your URL. 
And then at some point, if it has made it through all the tests it wants to do, then it sends the grade to the appropriate gradebook inside the learning management system. But the key thing is, is to get used to the idea that scroll to the bottom, look for what went wrong, and then see what it was that it was seeing. This particular one is working, and you can, you can see it. It's um, and the autograder is not trying to trick you, and it's not trying to mislead you. The autograder is, is, as best I can do it, telling you everything it's doing, everything it's looking for, and when, when it can't find something, it shows you the page that it was looking at, and that page wasn't right. Okay? So um, you'll get used to the auto grader. Um, it's a good helper and a good friend. Uh, make sure to look for the manual testing section in your assignments and do the manual tests. Uh, it will save you a lot of time, and it's just easier to fix your application by running your application yourself and then making changes to your application and then reloading your application, and, uh, and away you go. So I hope this little uh, summary of how the autograder works has been useful to you. Cheers.